Hey there, Ron Sullivan, your online hitting consultant. I want to talk today about uh, elite swing hitting myth of athleticism in the weight shift. Um, more importantly, how it's taught. Obviously, we want our players to have athleticism, right? There's no denying this. Um, but how it's taught normally uh, is when I think more and more kids are being uh, pushed in the wrong direction. And I think it's just a, a, a misunderstanding from these guys that just are not willing uh, to look at these things outside of their f philosophical hitting box. And so how did they learn the swing? Well, they learned the things that they talk about um, based on watching pros, right? And so let's just give some, some examples here of, you know, number one, they'll oftentimes talk about stride distance. Uh, they'll oftentimes talk about flexion in the front leg. They'll oftentimes talk about this, this action of the backside releasing, right? They'll talk about forward movement. Right? They'll talk about head movement. I still can't figure that out. But as a glossary of terms, right, they are, uh, I guess, decent definitions of what's happening in uh, the baseball swing in terms of what we see visually. I think that the, the, they, they do a good job of that. Um, it's the description of how your player is going to bring these things out that I think take players down a road that it's really hard to recover from. Um, so, for instance, you can uh, learn as a goal, right? Every time you swing the bat, you're going to stride really far out here. Um, and, um, and, and I think that you definitely can learn that way, okay? So the argument that I want to make today is that fundamentally speaking, one of the things that kids are not good at is understanding timing. Uh, Pre-swing movement... Um, at a very fundamental level, right, is all about timing. Uh, if I can't get my front foot down in time, it doesn't matter how big a movement. I can hike my knee over my head. I can stride out to the pitcher's mound, and it makes no difference. Um, if my foot's not down in time, I'm not allowing myself uh, the, the opportunity to make an offensive swing, like we're a full swing. Most kids are reactive when they swing the bat because they don't understand timing. Right? And so the way that we take this further in the wrong direction is um, we, we build as principles. Every time we swing the bat, we're going to stride out to this distance. Every time we swing the bat, we're going to land on a flex front leg. Every time we swing the bat, we're going to move forward a lot. We're going to move our head forward uh, and, and on and on and on. Now, I ask you to look deeper. Right? And that's the only requirement that this channel has is that what I try to challenge pe people to do is to look past what people see visually as descriptions of baseball swing. Right? And here's a perfect example. Alex Bregman, one of my favorite players, and if you haven't ever went to his channel, Alex Bregman on YouTube, it's very cool. Um, and um, Alex Bregman was points away from winning MVP, and this, uh, this swing is from last year. Uh, and it's a home run. I'll go ahead and play it out. This drives people crazy. I'll go ahead and let you see the whole swing. Here you go. Some of you can leave now. <laughs> you just wanted to see him swing the bat. Good. Uh, and, um, and so this was last season. This is, and you can find this on YouTube, February of this year of Alex Bregman in the cage. And um, the way that if Alex Bregman were to um, anonymously send this video to an elite swing hitting guy, what do you think they would say? Well, let's see from the start to here. All right? Well, they got to say something because they have all these pictures in their head of what the swing looks like. Bent front leg, longer stride distance, right? All these things would be, go, oh, you don't have your backside's not, not kicked in enough here, right? You get all kinds of stuff. Oh, your head was really still here. Did, you know, somebody t did a coach tell you you had to keep your head still? We want a lot of forward movement. Okay, so again, February of this year, do we, is anybody bold enough, I'm not going to, to say that Alex Bregman has changed his weight shift since last year? No. What this is, is know your environment. This is, what's, this is why my audience is going to be smarter. As you work with your kids, you're going to get to your goal a lot quicker than listening to guys talking about landing out here on a bent front leg. Right? Know your environment. This is what professional hitters show us over and over again, and what elite hitting instructors would say is, well, they don't know how they do their game swing. <laughs> um, knows his game swing really well. But this environment, probably somebody throwing overhand BP to him. Who knows what kind of velocity. They're just working on a swing, something maybe specific. None of us can really guess exactly what uh, Alex Bregman's working on. 
Um, but you can see that his game approach and his T approach, I'm sorry, his BP approach are a little bit different. Why is that the case? Now I'm going to make some, I don't, I don't produce very many videos on YouTube, right? I'm under a hundred videos on YouTube and uh, most guys have hundreds. And um, I try not to just, if I just said, all right, as a basis, I'm going to make every video swing up, get on plane, uh, don't hit down, all those things, uh, then I think that's boring and useless information for most people, right? Um, what you want is something different. And today I'm going to present something to you different in terms of how you're working with your kids, right? Game speed, which some people would just confuse with athleticism, right? Obviously, Alex Bregman's an athlete, right? There's no doubt about it. But game speed requires more from us. Naturally, it comes out um, that little small movements like this turn into this. When the pitcher is 60 foot 6 inches out front, right? Uh, we got to time the big move of the pitcher. BP, somebody's going to flip their arm and throw it overhand, right? A lot of different things to consider here. But professional hitters know their environment. If somebody told Alex Bregman, hey, you're not striding far enough. You need to get to out here like you do in a game. He would probably go look at you like you're crazy. Why? He would say, I think, right? What for? Well, because you're not landing on a flex front leg like this. And the landing that he's doing here, this may be a very bold uh, claim. It's the same landing that he's doing here. He's just taking that out farther, right, as a part of his timing move. So the goal here and I certainly can't speak for Alex Bregman or even that I completely understand what he's trying to feel. But I don't think his goal is landing on a flexed front leg as much as it's flexed when he gets to the ground. He's an athlete. Right? He's not going to have stiff legs. Um, and so the distance that you see here, the movement that you see here, right, is, a, is the environment has changed. Game speed requires more from us. Right? Here's Charlie Blackman on diamond demos, talking about his swing, what he's trying to work on in the spring. Right? He says, you know what? I have a tendency of getting out front a little bit, so I work on trying to keep my head really still. Those aren't my words. That's Charlie Blackman's words. And so you see in, a, in an environment like this, you see a very simple move. Boom, gets the foot down. Right? Up, down, hits. Right? Why is that the case? Well, here's a guy uh, throwing front toss from 15 feet away, underhand. It's not a game. Right? So the timing move, that little mechanism with a little knee raise there, it's basically the same. The distance it's going to travel is much different. Now, is anyone bold enough to say that Charlie Blackman doesn't really know what he does in a game? In other words, this is what the elite swing guys will always say is, well, the pros don't really know what they do. Keeping their head still is really not, a, it's really not what they're trying to do. Is anybody really bold enough to say that Charlie Blackman doesn't have more access to his own swing on video than any of us have access to? that Charlie Blackman knows his swing better than any of us know his swing. And does he know that his front foot reaches out further in a game? Obviously. Does he know that his head moves in game? Yes, that's why he works on it, because maybe at times he gets a little bit out front, as he said. Right? So that's why, as responsible teachers and instructors of the game, we challenge young players to try to feel like they're not getting a lot of forward head movement, in an environment like this especially. And then the game speed... If you work on the right things here, right, in game speed, you're going to see that naturally your kids make bigger moves. And this is why I started to think about this a few years back, really, and started thinking about this a little closer, is that when we make our goal distance that we're going to travel for more athleticism, we put kids in a big, big pickle. And the reason that's the case is because what we do is we bypass timing as a fundamental principle to pre-swing movement we automatically go to what could, there's no denying, bigger pre-swing movements can create more energy for the barrel. But if your kid doesn't understand timing, and this environment will tell you whether or not your player understands timing. If you can see from game swing to BP swing that these movements are more controlled in this environment, I guarantee your player understands timing. If your player ever, because maybe you've coached them because you've watched all these videos and, 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 and your player, every time they swing the bat, they make a big giant move like this. Even if the ball is sitting still on a tee, right? No matter what the situation, that's to me one of the craziest places for a big move. 
and the ball's sitting still, what, what timing is required there, right? Well, you can certainly work on the mechanisms that move, move your body, but jumping out really far on a ball sitting still, if you really think about it, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? And so that's my challenge to the elite swing hitting gurus, right, that make all these things out like, like the absolutes of landing on a bent front leg, you know, the absolutes of forward movement without taking into consideration one inch of what they actually work on, right? This is really important to understand. The difference between what the game, which some people falsely say more athletic movement and that we're going to just train a player to do more athletic movement, or is it that the game speed requires more from athletes and athletes give it that, right? And that's, to me, that's the fact. And so I would challenge you, if you have young players learning the game, temper the big move in these little, little environments, as I would call it, right, on a tee, right? There's no reason for a player to jump out really far, stride out really far on a ball sitting still, right? Have them control that movement. And then you'll see in the games, if you're working on the right feelings and movements, right, you'll see that in games they're naturally going to get bigger, this is, you know, I'm trying to come up with the hard numbers on this, but it's somewhere around, <laughs> not very specific, but 20 to 50% more uh, from kids that you'll see. Whatever that you see on the tee, they're probably going to add a little bit more in the games. Why? Game speed requires it. It requires more from us. So that's my challenge to you. Take a look at that. Ron Sullivan, your online Higgins Sultan. Thanks.